Hey, yeah, Cryptozins. Tonight's show, we can review with stories featuring Israel, Robin Hood, Digital Donations, Slope Wallet, and Wazir X. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time. The date is August 6th, 2022, and welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. My name is Nicodemus, and I'll be your host. The cover model, mascot, and co-host for this podcast is Tex. And together, we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. Keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. So Israel is putting in further restrictions on the use of cash. That's right. It was announced on Monday that Israel is putting those restrictions in place as a response to illegal activity and to promote the use of digital payments. Now, I say further restrictions because this isn't new ground here. Since January of 2019, the use of cash for payments has already been limited. There have been limits on cash payments ever since the law for the reduction in the use of cash was enacted. Now, there are a number of things that they expected from this law. It's primarily aimed at making it easier to track tax evasion, black market activity, and money laundering. But it has another profound uh, effect. You know, it's aimed at encouraging the country's businesses and customers towards digital cash payments. The limits on a per transaction basis are 6,000 shekels or around $1,760. That's for businesses. For individuals engaging in personal transactions, the limits are 15,000 shekels or roughly $4,400. Not only are they limiting the amount of cash you can use per transaction, they're also limiting how much physical cash you can hodl in your own home. That's right. Starting today, you can only have 200,000 shekels or around 58,000 US dollars. That's how much cash you can have on hand at your home. Tamar Braca is responsible for executing the law on behalf of the Israel Tax Authority. It's their view that limiting the use of cash is going to make it harder to be a criminal. They said, quote, The goal is to reduce cash fluidity in the market, mainly because crime organizations tend to rely on cash. Now, it seems to me like any celebrating by the crypto crowd here could be premature because I've seen suggestions made by high-level influencers that this is going to push crypto adoption, and I'm sure it'll help somewhat. You know, the fact that you can't walk in with a sack of cash and buy a car on the spot doesn't necessarily mean that crypto is going to fill that void. Far from it. Because while Israel isn't the first country to put restrictions on cash transactions, and they're not likely to be the last, that doesn't mean that they're welcoming Bitcoin with open arms. Not at all. Because Israel is exploring the unsavory side of digital currency. They first considered a central bank digital currency back in 2017. Now, back in May, the Bank of Israel put out the results of a public opinion on a digital shekel. They said that there was strong support for continued research into CDBCs and how they affect payments, how they affect financial stability and legal and technical issues. You know, in June, the central bank revealed that they had been doing lab experiments around user privacy and smart contracts. So it seems to me that Israel's probably going to go down the CDBC route. There is some hope, though. During the Israel Crypto Conference last May, Jonathan Sheck of of finance spoke. He said Israel's financial authorities have been working on a holistic digital assets framework. He didn't say when, but he said it would come out in the near future. He indicated that Israel's government was eager to grow the crypto industry in a safe, responsible manner. The New York Department of Financial Services has issued a $30 million penalty to Robinhood. This fine is based on allegations related to anti-money laundering, cybersecurity, and consumer protection laws. Adrian Harris is the agency's superintendent. In an announcement on Tuesday, she said Robin Hood's cryptocurrency arm would be paying a $30 million penalty, quote, for significant failures in the areas of Bank Secrecy Act, anti-money laundering obligations. There are also allegations of cybersecurity failures that also allegedly violated New York regulations. Harris said, quote, As its business grew, 
Robinhood Crypto failed to invest the proper resources and attention to maintain and develop a culture of compliance. All virtual currency companies licensed in New York State are subject to the same anti-money laundering, consumer protection, and cybersecurity regulations as traditional financial services companies. Now, the agency conducted an investigation of Robinhood Crypto for the period between January to September of 2019. They alleged during that time period that they, quote, found serious deficiencies in Robinhood Crypto's compliance function across multiple areas. And so it came to pass that Harris's agency began an enforcement action during which they found Robinhood Crypto to be in violation of aspects of the Bank Secrecy Act and anti-money laundering regulations. Among the allegations came the charge that while Robinhood Crypto grew, their monitoring didn't grow with them. That they didn't, quote, devote sufficient resources to adequately address risks. They said that Robinhood failed to maintain on its website a telephone number for the receipt of consumer complaints as part of a supervisory agreement. Cheryl Crumpton is an attorney with Robinhood. She said that they had reached a settlement in principle back in 2021 and had disclosed the matter in its public findings. Since that time, Crumpton said Robinhood has made, quote, significant progress building industry-leading legal, compliance, and cybersecurity programs. In what I'm considering to be a sign of the times, the Roman Catholic Church's Washington, D.C. Archdiocese plans on accepting donations in cryptocurrency. InGiven is a crypto platform, and as you might be able to tell by the name, InGiven, their work is around donations, specifically crypto donations. Their blurb on their Twitter account says, quote, In Givens Enterprise Donation Platform empowers nonprofit organizations to securely accept and exchange cryptocurrency donations. And that's relevant because it was In Given that made the announcement on Wednesday. Their Twitter account said that they would be facilitating donations to the Archdiocese for fundraising efforts. And also, this is expected to increase their digital stewardship initiatives. That's 139. DC parishes that would be receiving some level of support as well as local programs, like providing food for those folks who need it. Joseph Gilmer is their executive director. Now, he said, quote, The Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. seeks to leverage technology to engage parishioners in new and exciting ways, making it easier for the faithful to fulfill the mission of the church. So, and given has set up a webpage for the Archdiocese. On that page is the option to send anonymous crypto donations. Of course, you can also attach your name to the donation. And you get to pick a support, either for like a local parish or say any needy parish or one of some other programs that they have. And they're not picky. The list of crypto that they'll accept is long. They've even got Luna on their list. According to their page, funds designated for a specific parish 100% of that donation goes to that parish from the net proceeds. So now, remember on Tuesday night and until Wednesday morning, there was a massive hack in the Solana ecosystem. It's starting to look like the soft wallet provider, Slope, is largely to blame. 8,000 wallets compromised down to the seed phrase level and millions of dollars in Solana. ETH and other coins were stolen. It's looking like this is largely their fault. So Slope is a web-based wallet provider. It's on the Solana Layer 1 blockchain. Well, Solana has a Twitter account called Solana Status. And it was that Twitter account on Wednesday that seems to be pointing the finger in Slope's direction. They tweeted, quote, After an investigation by developers, ecosystem teams, and security auditors, it appears affected addresses were at one point created, imported, or used in Slope mobile wallet applications. This exploit was isolated to one wallet on Solana and hardware wallets used by Slope remain secure. While the details of exactly how this occurred are still under investigation, but private key information was inadvertently transmitted to an application monitoring service. Now, there was a bit of confusion earlier in the attack. My buddy texted me and he asked if I'd heard of an attack on phantom wallets. 
According to Solana's head of communications, Austin Fedora, reportedly 60% of the victims were phantom wallet users. That said, those affected did not generate their phrase in phantom. They generated their seed phrase through slope, which leads some to question whether the seed phrases were stored on slope's servers. If that data store holding seed phrases was compromised, that could explain how the funds were stolen. Solana co-founder Anatoly Yakovenko spoke up. He also pointed out a link between the hacks and the slope wallet. He used his personal Twitter account to tell everybody to create a new seed phrase as fast as they can and not to use slope to do so. He also said, quote, start practicing the cold, hot wallet separation. And slope, they issued a statement addressing the issue on Wednesday. They confirmed, quote, a cohort of slope wallets were compromised in the breach. They included members of their own staff in that number. And basically, they're telling people to create a new wallet with a new seed phrase and transfer all of the funds to that wallet. Now, Phantom Team, they got further involved. They suggest users should move their funds to a non-slope wallet. India's Directorate of Enforcement froze roughly $8.1 million of funds. This was in connection with an investigation into the cryptocurrency exchange Wazirx and the investigation is centered around instant personal loan fraud. So the directorate put out an announcement on Friday. And in that announcement, they alleged that WazirX helped unnamed fintech companies, quote, purchase crypto assets and then launder them abroad. This was part of a scheme to help Chinese-backed companies circumvent regulations. It was in the investigation that the directorate ordered WazirX bank accounts frozen and raids were conducted on properties owned by Samir Mahatre. Now, according to Indian government, the investigation is still ongoing. That said, the directorate claimed WazirX had lax KYC norms. They claimed, quote, loose regulatory control over the transactions between WazirX and Binance. And also, looks like that's the source of the KYC-related charges. Because allegedly, Wazir X didn't record the information to verify the origin of the funds used to buy crypto in the scheme. The directorate said, quote, despite giving repeated opportunities, Wazir X failed to give the crypto transactions of the suspect fintech APP companies and reveal the KYC of the wallets. They continued, Wazir X is not able to give any account for the missing crypto assets. It made no efforts to trace these crypto assets. By encouraging obscurity and having lax AML norms, it has actively assisted around 16 accused fintech companies in laundering the proceeds of crime using the crypto route. This is not Wazirx's first time coming under fire from the enforcement directorate. June of last year, they were ordered to show cause in a similar case. This was a money laundering investigation into illegal online betting involving Chinese nationals. At the time, Wazirx director Nichelle Seti said that the exchange, quote, went beyond its legal obligations by following know your customer and anti-money laundering processes and have always provided information to law enforcement authorities whenever required. And that's going to do it for our weekend review. I want to invite you back tomorrow night for our weekend update. Until then... Take care of yourselves, but take care of each other too. We'll see you tomorrow night.